Welcome guys to a new video. Today we are looking at Galaba. He is one of the rare tanks in the game. And I know there's a lot of people who want to play a tank build. And here this is just to show you guys it can be done. He also goes by the name of Raguto on YouTube. So you might have heard about him. He asked me to review his character and do this little build video. Because a lot of people were asking him about how does it work, how do you play tank. I thought tank is not possible in the game. So yeah, let's look at the details. As you can see here, it is pretty much insanely tanky versus any map boss. And later we will also show some gameplay where he fights the Void Rift bosses. Okay, let's go into the skills here. So the main skill here is going to be Frost Strike. But there's also gonna be Illusion X with Convert to Lightning Damage for the Shock. And there's also gonna be Poison Cloud which is another big damage boost. Okay, yeah. let's look at Frost Strike here. So Frost Strike, big AoE that is of course slowing down the enemies with chill and he's linking that to cold penetration, resistance, area effect, quick attack, tenacity and with spell activation on attack hit to poison cloud. Poison cloud is linked to poison penetration, find aid, area effect and status effect enhancement. There could be another link if you can fit it, but right now he's putting Illusion X here. Mostly due to the runestone hitting that spot, I assume. Okay, Illusion X, the third active skill. It's like an aura giving you these tiny little axes spinning around you permanently, by increasing your mana cost of other skills. And yeah, that's linked also to area of effect and status effect enhancement. And it's dealing the lightning damage for shock. Shock increases damage enemies take. And it's also linked to dampen resource cost. And to continuous shock. Okay, for the buffs here, he's running Tenacious Regeneration as a health regen. It's like a second life potion, basically. And that's linked to vitality recovery, time acceleration, and increased duration. Fighter's Wrath is the offensive skill here with attack speed and melee damage. Amplification, but mostly attack speed is the important thing here. And that is also linked to time acceleration and to versatility. Child of Provocation here is linked to time acceleration, increased duration, fast child, and child of power. For the movement skills, there's Roll, Diffuse Count, and Penetrating Slash, which is just a nice little melee movement skill. And that's also linked to Convert Lightning Damage, but that is not too important. If you cannot fit it in the exact same places and stuff, then it's not so crazy important to link it to Convert Lightning Damage. But it is a nice little damage boost, so if you can, make sure you do that. Okay, then Dampen Resource Cost is also linked to the Seals, which is Seal of Accuracy and Seal of Defense. Okay, yeah, let's look at the items here. It's going with Axes. They are both enchanted versions here with plus 2 mana on every hit and 1 mana on every hit and health on every hit. That will help us sustain a lot. So yeah, also health absorb here and some basic damage notes, some resists. Also here, some speed, some damage. And as you can see, these axes are not nearly um, rolled perfectly. So you can get a lot more damage than what's shown in this video. So yeah, once you min-max your weapons a little bit, you will be way stronger. Even. A double health here and crazy amount of resists on the helmet with a lot of armor. Tech speed necklace here with lots of health. And double resist again, health on kill, it's helping a lot with uh, maps. Armor and dodge rate split here with the mana cost dampening quite important. And chaos resist when fire, cold, lightning and poison resist are all 100 or more. So this gives you a lot of chaos resist. As a tank you want to max all of these resists anyway, so you should have that more than 100. So that is basically 25 chaos resist. Chaos Rest is really hard to come by and as a tank you want that thing, you don't want to die to one random thing that will make playing tank kind of pointless, so Chaos Rest is important on tank builds in my opinion. 
And yeah, here's some hit rating. The other stats are not too crazy good. There's some mana, some item drop rarity, but you, you, like all of these stats down here, they're not crazy mandatory. So if you find a better uh, Spalders, then you can use that for sure. On the body armor here, crazy amount of health, lots of mana regen, lots of health regen, lots of chaos resist. The only thing I'm kind of missing here, which is of course to run physical damage taken decreased, is the plus three um, to attack skills. That is like such a big damage boost. That maybe it's not worth to miss that. But yeah, you would lose at least like two, three hundred life for that. So. That's on your own consideration to make that. If you want to be a little bit more on the offensive side, then you can run plus three to attack skills. That will give you around 10% more damage. Okay, the chain gloves here. Lots of health again, lots of armor and dodge rate. Damage against the leads that works versus bosses, so that's a very big damage boost against boss fights. And here, elemental damage upon every hit against enemies if they are close to you. So that's just 23% more damage, or added damage, um, on your gloves there, as the enchant. Minus 9% mana cost, insane enchant here, with lots of movement speed, there's some stats, attack enhanced skill rune effect, so that applies to this rune here, and some hit rating, some lightning resist. So the reason why he's playing a lot of hit rating is, he wants to almost always hit the enemies, to apply the shock and, and and the chill because if the enemies are chill then they will actually be attacking way slower and moving way slower which is really adding up with your tankiness if your enemy attacks 25 percent slower you take 25 percent less damage it's that simple that's why you want to hit as often as possible enemies that aren't chilled and come close by they are a little bit more dangerous so applying chill to them is very important Okay, health potion effect, very important. Lots of health again on the boots, some hit rating again, some stats, crowd control duration that is also applying to the chill that we apply. So the enemies will be chilled for longer, we don't re-chill them. And here elemental damage rings with attack speed, double resist, some stats, some health, also some health, some attack speed, melee damage and resistance stats on the second rank. On the blessings he's going for a lot of elemental resist with casters, ecubans and vespers. I think this ecubans plus 40 is not needed here. It is only because he found kind of good stones for that. He would probably want to have uh, cold damage. So the Miracity's blessing here is the main blessing. Okay, so dodge rate, that's quite good. One-handed weapon. One-handed weapon is always um, if you are wearing a shield, so this doesn't apply here. Actually see the dodge rating. So yeah, dodge is quite powerful, so boosting that is a pretty nice thing here. On this stone here. So lots of health here. Also dodge chance if you have a lot of mana. Same here, so he's probably trying not to run low on mana. To get all of this extra dodge right there. Health with a shield, sadly we don't run one. Lots of elemental damage though. Attack crit rate, okay, that doesn't apply because we're running persistence, but lots of armor. And lots of health again. So yeah. Quite powerful stones here. Let's look at the relic here, so Avatar of Boreal, the main one, with lots of health and health reaching. And here the Earthshock that does a lot of damage, I was told. So that really helps you kill bosses. And the Avatar of Castor as the secondary here. With the... I don't know why he's um, using that, to be honest. Usually you want a second avatar, because you can only have one active at a time. I think that's just to fight bosses, because it really uh, debuffs the bosses. 
your speed and the attack and cast speed. I think that's a defensive relic versus boss fights, versus the harder boss fights. Often people choose a second relic that has a good passive, because the passive always applies to your character. The active skill is only used while this relic is summoned, so you cannot have both of them summoned at the same time. You can gain both the passives. Okay, let's look in here. Lots of decks, lots of strength. In the first trade, all the upper notes here. In the second trade, splitting into tankiness here. And some damage here. The third one, we skip that. The fourth one, also another split into tankiness and mana. And into even more tankiness and mana. Some resists here being taken. Okay, before you go here, you need to go in here. But we will go through all of the normal ones and then the specialization on the end. So yeah, lots of mana here again with mana on kill and health on kill. Um, in the sixth here, a lot of block. And some health here later, once he levels up, I assume he will take the physical damage taken. Dampening, that reduces the damage you take by quite a lot. Dampening is always a multiplier, so it's stronger than decreases. So keep that in mind. And some even more health and mana here. And a lot of cast resist here. So this is very powerful, and I think needed for most tank builds that want to be up close to Void Rift bosses. A lot of Void, void Rift bosses do fizz, uh, chaos damage, so that is probably needed if you plan on tanking any Void Rifts. Okay, yeah, lots of health again with health amplification and mana amplification. Very powerful. And yeah, even more health down here and the mana cost dampening here. Okay, yeah. Let's see the specialization. Free generation here, and health amplification, increased area of effect. With iron will, and focus, and the damage amplifications upon, uh, for four seconds upon blocking. So whenever you block, you up your damage a lot. Crazy amount of health here. And fighting spirit. And pain over here. And last a block specialization. So yeah, let's look at the stats. So almost max resist. This resist will be higher once you're in the map. Um, due to some stats not being counted here for the character sheet, as you can see, 13,000 health here. So that's quite powerful. Gas damage taken is minus 2. Lots of dodge rate, 31%. Dodge rate is really good if you have a lot of armor and if you have a lot of resists. Or a lot of health and a lot of resists. Because on its own, it's not a good defensive, since if you get hit once and die, then dodge is garbage. But if you can tank quite a bunch of hits, and then on top dodge a bunch of hits, then it gets really strong. And we can see here the block is 27%, also quite strong. It's a similar thing to dodge. If you can block while being tanky, it's very strong. If you only block and don't have any other tankiness, it won't be helping you a lot. So yeah. Now I will be playing some Void Rift boss fights in another map, and that's that for the video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Gameplay is coming now.